we have a huge, massive round of applause for what I can do for everyone. Thank you, and thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, brothers and sisters, the graduates, fellas, and their teachers, and some of the great guests in our midst. There are people who accompanied me to this great occasion. Um, Balarebe Murtala Baharu is a director in Carnywood. We came here together. He is the one who directed the film In Search of the King. Silence, please. Um, I've been accompanied by teachers from Jamaja English Academy and also Faruku Sayedi, Babar Rasaki of Dadunkoa, Malam Faisal, Malam Kawa and many more. Um, my topic is the benefits of studying literature. We are pressed for time. We don't have enough time. So you have to be quick. The topic is the benefits of studying literature. I, I don't know if in a San English Academy you teach literature. Do you? Do you teach literature? Okay. And I love this. Read until you can't imagine the number of books you read. The presentation is on my phone. So I'm sorry that I can't share with you any piece of paper. Before we talk about the benefits of studying literature, we need to define the term literature. There are multiple definitions of literature. In other words, the definitions of literature are countless. But one of the easiest definitions is the one that says, literature refers to pieces of writing that are valued, especially novels, plays, and poems. Pieces of writing that are valued, especially novels, plays and poems. This definition comes from the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. And there is another famous definition from Plato, a Greek philosopher. He says, literature is the mere imitation of life. Let me now turn for a moment, if I may, to present to you 12 benefits of studying literature, 12. But quickly, we have to be quick. Benefit number one. Benefit number one. Literature makes you think deeply. It makes you think deeply. Needless to say, for example, when you lay your hands on a text, on a novel, for example, there are characters in that novel, there are people in that story, and those people are called characters. You need to think about the characters. You need to think about them. You need to understand them. You need to see what they like and what they don't like. You need to understand their inclinations and temperaments. You need to understand their behavior. Some characters are honest and straightforward, while others are dubious. 
than the plot of the story. You can't have a, a story without a plot. Some plots are linear, just straightforward, while other plots are complex and complicated. So if a plot is complicated, you have to use your gray matches for you to understand that plot. And then the issue of themes. When we say themes, we mean the lessons that the text or the author wants you to get from the work. You can't understand the lessons of a text if you don't think deeply. So literature makes us think critically, just like the way mathematics makes us do. Benefit number two, quickly. Literature exposes you to unknown places and societies. It exposes you to unknown place and societies. For example, when you read the novel Oliver Twist, Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, you will be able to know how the impoverished citizens of London lived their lives in the 19th century. When you read Black Boy by Richard Wright, you will see how black Americans suffered in America. When you read 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, you will be exposed to the Colombian society. Just two days ago, we watched a movie here called Avatar. Avatar exposes the viewer to an unknown planet, a new planet called Pandora. So literature takes you to new worlds of experience. It exposes you to the unknown. Number three, literature motivates people to read widely. It motivates people to read widely. Millions of books have been published. Novels, plays, poems, travelogues, biographies, autobiographies, memoirs. So you have a wide range to choose from. If a particular text does not catch your fancy, one will definitely do. So because there is a wide range to choose from, you will always have something to read. So it motivates you to read widely. I am fascinated by this quotation. Read until you can't imagine the number of books you read. Professor Saleh Abdu once told us that before you write a single poem, make sure that you read at least 100 poems. Before you write a single story, make sure that you read at least 100 stories. Benefit number four, which is closely related to this one, is the one that says, literature inspires people to write. Literature inspires people to write. Because when you read a lot, when you read a lot, that's consumption. When you consume a lot, you feel the urge to also produce. So when you read and read and read, you feel the urge, you feel the motivation to also write. And that's why a scholar says, good writers tend to be good readers. Quickly, Benefit number five, literature improves our communication skills. Literature improves our communication skills. We all know the communication skills, listening, speaking, um, reading, and writing. These are the four communication skills. So when you immerse yourself in literature, automatically these four communication skills will be improved. For example, when you listen to a lot of literature, when you watch a lot of movies, definitely when you come to speak, your speech is going to be powerful and effective and fluent. When you read a lot and there is the need for you to write something, you will see that 
you have produced something effective, something powerful, and something enviable. And we all know that even children have their own literature. That is what we call children's literature. Uh, for example, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. If you want to teach children basic reading, you can expose them to children's literature. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, for example, or the Pied Piper of Hamelins, or Harry Potter. So the best way to improve your communication skills is by exposing yourself to literature. Benefit number six, number seven, sorry. Literature promotes culture. Literature promotes culture. One, more, one of the students here talked about culture. Literature promotes culture, needless to say. For example, read Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. You will see the Igbo culture. Read The African Child by Kamara Lai. You will see the culture of the people of Guinea. Read Magana Jairi Che by Abubakar Imam. You will see the Hausa culture. And read Aliyu Kamal also. Aishuru, Mana, Aishuru. All the novels of Aliyu Kamal, all the novels of Aliyu Kamal, all of them are about Hausa culture and Hausa environment. Watch the movie In Search of the King, directed by Balarabi Murtala Baharu. You will see Hausa culture. There are three towns in that movie. First, we have Tumashe. Lady, in silence, please. It's okay, it's okay. We have Tumashe, we have Guarida, and we have Salbana. In all these towns, in In Search of the King, you will see the real culture of Hausa people. So if you have not watched the movie In Search of the King, do that now. It's on YouTube. Benefit number eight. Literature promotes religion and morality. It promotes religion and morality. We see this in the works of Aliyu Kamal again. Aliyu Kamal claims that he writes Islamic novels. In his novels, he promotes Islam. There is another writer from Indonesia called Habibur Rahman. Habibur Rahman also writes Islamic novels. He promotes Islam. He uses novels as a tool of promoting Islam. And when you read a novel called The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, you will see that in the novel, he promotes Christianity. So we use literature as a tool of promoting religion and morality. Benefit number nine, quickly. Literature preserves history. It preserves history. Read War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. It's a Russian writer. When you read it, you will see that history has been represented. Because before he wrote the novel, he had to read a lot of history. He had to do a lot of research. And the book, the novel, is a combination of fiction and reality. It's about Napoleonic Wars. We all know Napoleon Bonaparte, the French emperor. He wanted to conquer the whole Europe. And in that text, War and Peace by Leo Tolso, he tries to capture those wars fought by Napoleon Bonaparte. And also, A Tale of Two Cities, another novel by Charles Dickens. A Tale of Two Cities is about the French Revolution. When we read history, we will come across the French Revolution. So a tale of two cities captures the French Revolution perfectly. So in that case, it preserves history. And then Pull of Fate. Pull of Fate is an autobiography of Mala Magajit Ambata, the late Magajit Ambata, Allah Gabal Tamasa. He wrote an autobiography called Pull of Fate. When you read it, you will see the history of Nigeria vividly and graphically.
the history of Nigeria at its ease. For example, if you want to know about the civil law, somebody asked me about the text that he should read in order to know a lot about Nigerian civil war. When you read Pull of Faith by Magadji Dambata, you will see exactly how the, the Nigerian civil war Biafra happened. So in that case, literature also preserves history. And then benefit number 10. Literature entertains people. Needless to say, it entertains people. If you are stressed, if you are tired, if you are exhausted, if you are depressed, you turn to literature for entertainment. It serves as a form of escapism. Okay? You can watch a movie, you can pick up a novel and read, you can listen to a piece of music, you can recite a poem, etc., etc. Benefit number 11, remember we have only 12 benefits here, but the benefits are too numerous to count. Literature promotes justice. It promotes justice. For example, Ken Sara Wiwa, a Nigerian writer, used literature to promote justice. He used one of his texts called A Month and a Day, it's a detention diary, to draw the attention of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to the plights and difficulties of the people of Niger Delta. And in the end, we know what happened. He was killed by hanging. And South African writers, black writers in South Africa, use literature as a tool for fighting against injustice. Writers such as Alex Laguma in South Africa, he was a black South African, and Peter Abrahams and Louis Nkosi. All these are black South African writers. They use literature as a tool for fighting against injustice in South Africa. We know what happened in South Africa, apartheid. Nelson Mandela was in prison for 27 years because black people were discriminated against. Black people were subjugated. Black people were oppressed. So they use literature in order to liberate themselves. And finally, literature promotes peace and tolerance. It promotes peace and tolerance. We all know that Nigeria is a multicultural society. Nigeria is a multi-ethnic society. So if we expose ourselves to literature, we will be able to understand one another. We will be able to appreciate our differences. We will be able to be accommodating, to be tolerant of one another. Because you can't live in peace and harmony if you don't appreciate your differences. An example here is a text called The Shadow of Imana. The Shadow of Imana is a book, it's a novel that talks about the Rwandan genocide. We know there was a genocide in Rwanda in, in 1994. About one million people were killed. Hutus killed Tutsis. After the genocide, a writer by the name of Veronique Taju went to Kigali and captured what happened exactly. And we have a book now, The Shadow of Imana. It's a novel. And that book is about the genocide, what really happened. And in the end, it shows that Hutus and Tutsis should, be, should live in peace and harmony with one another. That when you go to Kigali now, when you go to Rwanda, it, it's, it's prohibited, it's an offense to identify yourself as Hutu or Tutsi. And when you see the cover of the book, you see that there is a child who is a Tusi and there is another one who is a Hutu, shaking hands. Meaning, despite all that had happened, there should be peace and harmony in the country. There is also a movie in that regard called Sometime in April. When you watch Sometime in April, it's also about Rwandan genocide. It captures what really happened in Rwanda. But again, in the end, it shows that Rwanda is now a peaceful country. Or for peace to reign in Rwanda, 
Hutus and Tutsis have to come together. We are pressed of time. We are running out of time. We have to stop here. In conclusion, in conclusion, I will say this. If you want to be a great scholar, if you want to be a great lawyer, if you want to be a great politician, if you want to be cosmopolitan, if you want to be civilized, if you want to be edified, if you want to be refined, if you want to be a man of letters, if you want to be a polymath, if you want to be an all-rounder, then dive into the ocean of literature and swim in it with a passion and relish and enthusiasm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for inviting me and I hope that this event will be annual. And uh, I always have a, a, a sense of fulfillment when I see academies like this one. Um, my Adam, he has told you, was one of my students. And as my students, he was very intelligent. I remember vividly, I remember vividly uh, the public speaking class. He was the group leader. He likes public speaking. And uh, he saved his group. I remember vividly. He was in the same, yes, he was in the same class as M.M. As Haruna. M.M. Um, M. Haruna also has his own academy, and uh, he has been contributing his quota to the development and promotion of literacy. Um, Anas Kampa, uh, one of my students also, Muzamil Ibrahim Yaka, say they have all established their academies. One day I met Adam A. Zongo, and Adam A. Zongo was one of my first students in Jamaja English Academy, and he said to me, your friend came here and, and told me about something. I, and I said, who? He said, M.M. Haruna. I said, wow, you were in the same class as, as, as M.M. Haruna. And he said, That's what he said. And one day, Alinu Alinu said to me, Jamaja, your school is very good. Because Falele Dorei, as I know him, could not speak English. He could not produce even one sentence. But one day, we went to India, and I saw Falele Dorei speaking English. And I said, Falelu. I said, Falelu, how come? Why did you learn English? And Falelu said, said to me, And, and from then on, um, Alinu uh, started respecting Jamaji Academy. He sent his sister to the school. He sent, he sent his younger brother to the school. And he appointed himself as an unofficial, informal ambassador of Jamaja English Academy. But Abale, Abale is now the official, formal ambassador of Jamaja English Academy. So you see, these academies are for the good and benefit of Kano State and Northern Nigeria at large. Okay? So... We are not competing with one another. We are not fighting one another. We are brothers. We are friends. We are partners in progress. And Kano is a big city. We need more centers. When I saw a piece of information that Kano is the most literate state in northern Nigeria, I was overjoyed because I said, I said, we contributed to this. So Kano is the most literate society in northern Nigeria. Because Jamaji is there, M.M. Haruna is there, Anes is there, Assad is there. What a speech. <laughs> we really enjoyed the speech, particularly when uh, Malay is talking about knowing. Hey, my God, I have to put